One of the features that makes CTrader Automate stand out is the ability to use both synchronous and asynchronous programming to execute your orders. These options allow you to develop both lightning-fast strategies that can submit multiple orders simultaneously, without delays, as well as strategies that need to wait for the execution result before they can proceed to the next steps. In this video, we will explain the difference between synchronous and asynchronous execution and we will show you how to use both ways to execute your orders in your CBOT. We will start by demonstrating synchronous order execution using a simple diagram. Synchronous order execution is the execution type that is waiting for the order to be executed before it proceeds to the next instruction. In this case CTrader sends an order to the server and waits for a response before it can proceed with the next instruction and send the next order. On the other hand, asynchronous execution allows CTrader to send multiple orders in parallel without expecting a response from the server. By using asynchronous execution, a strategy can minimize the total execution time required for executing multiple orders. Now let's navigate to CTrader Automate and create a new CBOT named Parallel Orders Execution. To demonstrate how synchronous execution works we will write a for loop inside the onStart method executing 10 orders in a row. We will achieve this using a for loop and execute market order method. After the execution of each order, we print in the log that the order was sent, as well as the number of positions. We can get the number of open positions using the count property of the positions collection. Let's build the CBOT and run it on a demo account. Then, let's inspect the log. As you can see, the positions count is increasing after each position is executed. This means that the code is waiting for each order to be executed before sending the next one. Now let's change the order type to asynchronous and run our example again. We can do this by using the execute market order async method instead. We will also add an event handler to listen to the positions opened event. In our event handler we will print a message in the log as soon as a position has opened as well as the number of open positions at the moment. Let's build the CBOT again and experiment with it on our demo account. Let's inspect the log. In the log we can see that all orders have been sent without receiving confirmation about the previous one, since the number of open positions was zero at all times. 
Confirmations arrived and printed in the log some milliseconds after all orders were sent to the server. Now we can move back to our source code and demonstrate an important feature of asynchronous order methods, which is the option to use callback methods that are triggered as soon as the operation has finished. In our example, we will remove the positions, open event handler and replace it with a callback method that will print the message as soon as the order has been executed. First let's declare the callback method. In our callback method we will write some code to print in a message in the log whether the trade succeeded or not. The trade result parameter comes with a boolean property that allows you determine if the trade succeeded or not. We will print the relevant message for each case. Then let's pass it as a parameter to the execute market order async. The difference between using a callback method and an event handler to monitor when positions are opened is that the callback method will be called regardless if the trade has succeeded or not. This way you can be informed of possible non-successful trades and act accordingly. Lastly, we will demonstrate how to monitor the status of an asynchronous trade. Execute market order async returns a trade operation object which allows you to monitor if the order is still executing or not. Let's declare a trade operation field. Then let's remove the loop. Keep only one execute market order async method and assign to our trade operation variable the result of the execute market order async method. We will add a timer to our C bot and use an event handler to check every timer tick. We will check the status of the operation every 100 milliseconds. We will use a time span object to determine the duration of the tick. If the operation is still executing, the timer will print this in the log. In our timer, if the trade operation field is not null, we print the status of the operation. Let's build and test our CBOT on our demo account. By inspecting the log we can see that between the order submission and order execution, the timer prints in the log that the order is executing. After the order has been successfully executed, the timer prints that the trade operation is not executing anymore. In this video we demonstrated the power of synchronous and asynchronous execution in CTrader Automate. Synchronous execution can be used when you need to know the outcome of your order before you can proceed to the next step.
Asynchronous execution can be used when you need to send multiple orders to the server in parallel without any delays, while you can still await the results of the asynchronous operations. We hope that you found our video helpful. Feel free to ask any questions at the bottom of this video and subscribe to be updated when we publish a new video.